the things from the stars, in the name of the altars of the stars, in the name of the land of the sun. There we go. Live in a few moments. Let's keep this flowing. There we go. There we go. Very good. Lady Chelsea, are you with us? Yeah, I am. Wonderful. And um, good morning to you, Lady Chelsea. And if I may say so, before I begin the show, welcome back. How are you feeling? Thank you. I'm How are you feeling? I'm, I'm, I'm good, thank you. Good morning. Oh. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, good morning. Oh, well, I was momentarily worried about you. I've got to say, Lady Chelsea. Yeah, let's see. Oh. Oh. Yeah. And we'll then begin the show. Oh, what a moment. I get some feedback. Let me just resolve that very mm -hmm. quickly. Oh, always these technical matters. Yes, Lady Chelsea, I was momentarily worried about you. Why? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, you know, okay. we can look out for your health. Yeah, no, that's fine. I'll see you last week. Yeah, but, you know, I keep worrying about you. I want to make sure oh. you're strong, you're vibrant. Okay. Yeah, you're going for the future, yeah? Okay. I appreciate it, thank you. <laughs> it is my pleasure. So let's start the show. So welcome everyone to The Motivator Show, alongside Lady Chelsea. Again, good morning to you, Lady Chelsea. Good morning. Hi, hi. Good, good, good. Now, I did want to first, before I begin, I want to recognize Jayan King, who's taken us from night to day, Jai King, praises and respect to you. Thank you for taking us forward, taking us forward. Also, of course, want to recognize, all importantly, the galaxy management. Those visionary, ordinary African peoples who had a vision to develop a media platform that we finance, we control, and we project our perspective, our worldview to our audience, but most specifically to the community and absolutely to our children, okay? So you hear the negative propaganda outside, here it will be positive vibes, yeah? Positive vibes. So I wanna get praise to Chief Pokambabai, the founder and leader of Galaxy Radio at Fiwi.net. I want to give praise and recognition to Elder Eric Kute, who I haven't seen for a while, but I know he's alive and vibrant. Give recognition, of course, to Dr. Man Abu Latata, that stalwart, that determined African man. I want to give praise, of course, and recognition to the longest serving pilot, Nickel. The most royal, okay? I just love that name, Lady Chelsea. I love that name. I can say certain finesse, you see. Yeah. <laughs> but most importantly, I know the chief won't mind me saying this, and other gentlemen will not mind me saying this. I want to give recognition to Empress Shanice, the solution finder. You give a task to Empress Shanice, and she will follow it through diligently. It will not be some long thing. She will make sure it's completed in a timely fashion. I want to give praise to Empress Shanice. Thank you for being there. And thank you not only for being there, but making sure that others want to come here, here on this platform, on galaxyafiwi.net. Okay, recognition to you, my, my, my Empress, recognition to you. I know that you will follow 
this show. So I'll give further praise to you before we, 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 we close off. But I want to recognize that outstanding empress. Yeah, I want to give recognition to her. But I also, of course, want to recognize some past contributors to the show. And later on, I'll give light to a number of past contributors. But as is usual with, with, with these things, I received significant numbers of messages, feedback from listeners to the show. And as you know, um, we are transmitting via galaxyafiwi.net. That's the radio station, internet radio station. We also transmit via multimedia platforms under the Motivator Show logo. So under the Motivator Show, uh, we are transmitting via YouTube, Facebook, and of course, Mixcloud. You find you find local D motivator, D E and motivator, and D E D, the, yeah, the thing. Mm -hmm. We mean the thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just for those, yes, Lady Chelsea had to translate for some people because some people believed mm -hmm. there was a, it was a down and negative, but actually, it's the, yeah. And if you mm -hmm. check out eight of the languages. D is recognized as the, it's, it's a conjunction word, yeah? Understood, mm -hmm. okay, for those who needed to know. Really important that um, the feedback that I received, not only to last week's show and the previous shows, but more specifically to the health messages that I give out every week. And it is interesting that there are some people who've been listening to the show for more than a year or two, okay, and haven't actually taken on the health messages until they get sick. <laughs> mm -hmm. You see, huh? You mm -hmm. feels it, knows it, huh? <laughs> Isn't that true? Yep. Yeah. Uh, often that is the message, you know. Unfortunately, and until we generally are able to accept the advice and guidance of those who are trained, those who are elders, and take it on board and incorporate it as part of our thinking, part of our consciousness, part of our behavior. We continue to have to make the same mistakes <laughs> and learn the same mistakes that others have, have uh, gone through previously, okay? So I was informed of two friends of mine, one who is now apparently has um, diabetes, and the other, who now has uh, been diagnosed with hypertension. And both of them, quite separately, made contact with me and said, well, maybe we should have, or they should have followed the advice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was never telling anyone what to do. It's mm -hmm. simply, I ask people to consider, and if in doubt, speak to your doctor. Is that reasonable? Mm -hmm. that reasonable? Yeah. Yeah. And it is quite profound, because these are individuals I've known for many years, and they were all roughly the same age, okay? And it's that cumulative impact that um, these, these conditions just creep up on you, okay? But it's been, it be, it's been building up for years, for decades, okay? So I'm, I'm now even more confident that um, these health messages are strategically important to our communities strategically important. And these are habits that we've got to incorporate as part of our children's thinking and behavior so they take it into, a, into their adulthood. And for adults, at some point, to hear the message. So I'll give out the, the messages. I ask you to consider the amount of sugar you are ingesting into your bodies, okay? I ask you to think about the cumulative impact of sugar or sucrose in your bodies, okay? I'm not telling you not to, not to take it or to consume it. I ask you to consider the amount. Do you need the additional spoons of sugar in your teas and your coffees? Um, how many of these so-called soft drinks or fizzy drinks are you consuming or are you giving to your children? Do you need those cakes? What quantity of cakes, which is just essentially just sugar? Mm -hmm. Think about the cumulative impact sugar has on your body. And I know I've, I've said this before and I'll keep saying it. Um, 
Professor Hilary Beckhaus uh, gave a lecture uh, to at the University of West Indies, which is one of the top 1% universities in the world. And he noted the epidemic of, uh, of diabetes among primarily people of African heritage who reside in the Caribbean. But similar, similar cases exist here in Britain and Europe, and most certainly United States of America. Similar levels of uh, almost ep ep epidemic levels of diabetes exist in our communities. And it could be avoided by reducing the amount of sugar that we ingest. And it cumulatively affects our body not over a year, 10 years, but over a series of decades. Mm -hmm. I also ask you to consider the amount of salt that you are ingesting. Do you need to add your salt, add salt to the food? I know often we do it out of habit for flavor reasons, okay? But actually, actually, does it enhance the flavor or have we simply formed the habit of adding salt to our food, you know? There are many parts of the motherland of Africa that salt is considered to be a suppressor of your spiritual heightenment. Mm -hmm. So I wonder where it came from, mm -hmm, that we add salt to our foods. It's absolutely not necessary because most foods contain sufficient numbers of trace elements that are enough for us to get on with. Mm. Yeah? yeah, it's quite profound, yeah, quite profound, quite profound. I also ask people to consider the amount of uh, fat and carbohydrates they're ingesting. Fat, of course, primarily from dairy products. Yes, dairy products are simply animal or cow fat that has been hardened. Cheese is just a lump of fat. Hey, Lady Chelsea, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cheese is just a lump of cow fat. Okay, that's what it is. Yeah. Milk is bovine, or indeed cow's milk, is simply, well, actually, it's mostly fat. Lactose is fat. Yeah. Mm. The cumulative impact it has on our bodies, not over a year or five years or ten years, but over decades, okay, is to raise the amount of fat that we retain in our bodies and accumulate around our organs, similar with carbohydrates, which we convert carbohydrate mainly from flour products, yeah? We convert in our bodies to what? Sugar, and we store it, again, accumulating around our organs. Mm -hmm. And what it's doing, it put additional burden on our hearts to function properly. Okay, as I said, we'll, we'll get the nutritionists and doctors in to talk about these subjects in greater depth in, in a future show. Mm -hmm. It's quite clear that these, these food, food products are having an adverse effect on our general health. And we need to talk about it. Yeah? Silence is not golden. It is detrimental. It is bad for our health. We must talk about it. Discuss it amongst ourselves. Yeah? Okay. But of course, I equally ask people to think about the amount of water you are consuming. Ideally, I'm told between two to three liters, depending on your height and body mass. Speak to your doctor or nutritionist for the appropriate amount for yourselves. But we must drink an appropriate amount of water each day. Because our bodies are mostly, we are mostly water. More than 75% we are water. Yeah. Mm. So it's, a, it's critical to us, to our general health and helps us to flush out the toxins that we readily ingest through these modern lifestyles of ours. And of course, I want to positively encourage listeners and viewers to eat more green vegetables, vegetables generally, and of course, fruits as well. Okay, Mission critical if you want to live a long, healthy lifestyle. I don't mean, of course, and I know many in our community eat a lot of these root vegetables, like yams and so on, okay? But you've got to eat those in the right proportion, because they contain a, a significant amount of um, starch, which again, we convert into sugar in our bodies, okay? And of course, 
the instances of diabetes is directly related to our diet and physical activity. Mm -hmm. I say our physical activity because I know many of you who are listening right now or are viewing this right now haven't, have not exercised as yet this morning. Deliberately exercise different parts of your body. I've got my weights here. Oh my God, Lady Chelsea. Can, can oh you, I, I'm going to have to uh, ask you to help me I'm sometime. Write that. Oh, come on. Yourself, but, oh, okay. I, <laughs> no, okay. I love it. I, I love it. I can't do it. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> I absolutely love it, Lady Chelsea. I absolutely love it. Oh, I have to tell you. It, it pushes my muscles. I, I put them on my feet and lift them up. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Oh, yeah. I sweat, Lady yeah. Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> exercise, deliberate exercise to raise your heart, to sweat, to, to, to allow, your, allow your body uh, to purify itself. Exercise is critical to our general health. Exercise is critical to our general health. Work, going to work is not exercise. Lady says, I will say that again, because I know some people think otherwise. I'm going to say it again. <laughs> going to work is not exercise exercise okay mm -hmm. I, I, I think it's important for listening to remember going to work is not exercise exercise is a deliberate effort to um, to flex your muscles in different parts of your bodies okay and to raise your heart so you sweat and you're able to through your pores excrete the toxins in your bodies okay it is mission critical and lastly, and lastly, as Brother Kwame in, in uh, Nottingham reminded us, it is so important that we take care of our mental health. Okay? If in doubt, please seek professional advice. Go to your GP, yep, your, the doctor, whoever is your closest clinician is familiar with your uh, medical records or have access to your medical records, Please, if in doubt, go speak to your doctor so you can receive a referral. Okay, really, really important because the instances of mental health in our community is above the average, way above the average. Because we are tending to hide our doubts and concerns about our mental health. Really important that we get that right, but equally important is ensuring our spiritual health is taken care. You know, those times, and I would encourage you all to meditation, yeah? Where you allow yourself to be calm, settled, untroubled, you clear your mind, and you allow your energy to rise inside you, yeah? You dispel all the concerns, all the fears, all the contrary information that you're exposed to and you allow your spirit to rise in you and trust me if you practice that type of meditation for at least 10 15 20 30 minutes a day you'll find it transformative truly transformative you'll be clear firm focused and nothing will stop you absolutely nothing will stop you when you raise your spiritual self Absolutely. And my very last health message, of course, it goes to the sexual health specialist nurse we had on this show. Particularly those of you who enter a relationship for the first time, there is no embarrassment in both the, the, the man and woman going to a sexual health clinic and ensuring you know your sexual health status. If you don't know that status, you should not engage in risky um, physical contact. If this is quite early in the morning, so I can't elaborate further. But I'm sure those I would I say. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but it's important. I would encourage our, our people to think about your sexual status, your sexual health. Okay. And if you've never been to a sexual health clinic, well, I have to say to you, you really should, just to make sure you are clear, 
Okay, better to detect it now and to have a an STI, a sexually transmitted infection, to be persistent in your body. Okay, and you then pass it on to other people. I want to implore you. I wish to implore you. Think about your sexual health. And if you've never been to a sexual health clinic, which is always private, no, there's no personal intrusion. Honestly, you need to go. It, it, I don't mean just young people. I mean the oldies. Yeah? People of my age, as it were. Yeah? Yeah? Important. Check out your sexual health. Okay? If you've had more than one partner, check out your sexual health. In communities, particularly where I am right now, we have had persistently high levels of STIs in the African or Black communities. <laughs> persistently high levels. We can do better. Indeed, we should do better. I'd implore you to check our program of, of a few weeks ago where we, we focused on sexual health in the African Black community. I implore you, think about your sexual health. There you are. I think, I think that's enough of my health messages. And I, and I welcome the feedback I've been receiving, you know. I welcome the feedback, you know. And I know it's sometimes quite difficult because many of us have developed habits and those habits may not include regular exercise. It's only when it's highlighted how critical exercise is that many of us respond. Or indeed the diet and the impact diet has on our general health and well-being that we respond. But I ask you, please, don't wait to a critical moment. Please, preempt, defend, yeah? Prevention is better than cure. Okay, okay. All right, then. I'll just spend a quick minute, if you don't mind, Nate Chelsea, before I hand over to you and the questions, okay? Uh, I want to give praise and recognition to our contributor last week, okay? Um, I, I think you would agree that she was outstanding. Okay, yeah. I think she was, and um, and I, I and I've I've got to say, you know, I'm, I'm so honoured that um, we've been able to focus on women achievement in our community. Okay, and I believe in focusing on women. We highlight, as I've said before, I know some men don't like when I say this, but whatever, you know, <laughs> whatever I say to you, uh, you know, I, I think we as men do not give women sufficient regard and, and recognition uh, for their contribution to our general wealth, health and well-being. So I want to give praise and honour to um, our good sister, Naima Ali on focusing on um, what I described initially as some um, female circumcision, but she correctly phrased it, female genital mutilation. Okay. And uh, the types of uh, female genital mutilation, some of it is quite horrific. Okay. But in fact, it's all horrific. And, and now that I'm fully conscious of is the not only the physical impact, but the psychological impact it has on our women, I say to those men, and indeed those women who, who are supporting it, please, please stop. That's the way I can implore you. Please, please stop. Lady Chelsea, what, what's your opinion on this one? Um... Should it stop? Sure. Yeah. Should, should, we, should it be stopped? Female genital mutilation? Yeah. It's not even... The, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I can. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah no, of course. There's, okay. Yeah. No, that, yes. Yeah, not even a question. Yeah. Not even a question. There's no need for it. There's no need for it. Okay. There's no need for it. It cannot be said to be cultural... And, and um, uh, Naima made it clear, it cannot be said to be religious either, okay? So, yeah, yeah. yeah it is absolutely terrible thing to do to a, uh, to a woman, uh, to, particularly um, to a young girl or to a woman. And it's, in some cultures, I understand, just before the wife, um, a woman is married, they, they, they commit this crime against her. Um, oh, I think that's... 
absolutely awful and it should be stopped. It should be made, in, in fact, it should go to um, the United Nations should, to formally ban it, yeah? Mm. Outlaw it at the international level. <laughs> so all countries have to comply. It, it is a crime against women and should be stopped. Okay. Mm. So I, I've got no hesitation in, in getting, getting behind such a campaign. I've got no hesitation whatsoever. And, 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 I'm, and I'm pleased that um, Naima referred to a, 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 um, a, 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 a walkathon or a run in support of um, uh, FGM in Southwark Park here in Southwark, and it went off successfully. So I applaud her and those who attended for, for attending and those who attended the results of this show I'm, I'm, I'm going to give praise to you all give praise but wherever we find it we must root out and prevent um, FGM female genital mutilation it is not it is no way good for a woman okay and should be stopped it should be considered an international crime okay, okay so I think I've said my piece on that okay <laughs> <laughs> I just want to give, give praise, of course, because we've had a series of very interesting shows, which are from mm-hmm. women, but I did want to just remind us of the previous show we had, um, that, um, uh, which involved um, Nzinga Asata, okay, that wonderful elder, okay, the author, okay, of Garvey, um, of Women in the Garvey Movement, academic, political activist, teacher, a nurse, okay? Mm-hmm. And what she demonstrated is what ordinary people could do when they are unhindered by the propaganda that we can't do for self. Mm-hmm. That all of us, each one of us, can make a small contribution to our community-wide improvement, ascension, okay? And what she demonstrated is the inner strength that I see in women, that men do not give sufficient recognition to. So I want to continue to give that recognition and give praise to her. And hopefully she's listening. I want to put my fist up to her and say, yeah, my older, please continue to give wise and give wise counsel to the community. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, my, and my last recognition, I, I want to give recognition to that wonderful, inspired sister, um, uh, Sister Elsie Owusu, the founding chair of the Society of Black Architects. Okay? Mm-hmm. And what she demonstrated is the women's ability in the most male-dominated sector, not only to flourish, but to excel. Yeah. Them. I want to demonstrate, she's a demonstration of our collective determination, okay, and at the moment she's going through some um, trials and tribulation with clear um, ethnically biased treatment in the hand of a, a council in the southern part of England, okay, she's going through the appeals procedure right now, and when she, when she is successful, she will be successful and get her back again, and we're going to go through what she's gone through in detail. But I want to give praise and recognition to the founding chair of the Society of Black Architects, um, Elsie Owusu. Praise be, praise be. And there are many more I could note, but those few I give you. Oh, in fact, let me give one more. We don't mind, ladies and gentlemen. I'll take one more minute. Okay, thank you. I want to give praise and recognition to a wonderful sister, okay? Uh, the, um, the very first um, woman chair of the uh, of, of Southwark's um, Muslim Forum. Okay. Now, of course, I say the very first woman chair of Southwark's Muslim Forum. And what she demonstrated, it's the strength of women, Muslim, Muslim women. She was the first openly, absolutely, um, uh, demonstratively, Muslim women we've had on the show, which is most, mm-hmm. yeah, most curious, okay, most curious. And of course, it was then followed by Naima of the following week. But uh, this, uh, so that is uh, a woman of such integrity, such, such strength, 
But oh, I, I, I can't say much more than to say honour and respect to you. Honour and respect. And, yeah. and she's promised that um, she will appear again with the uh, local imam. And we can talk about um, the faith and that and the faith contribution to the aspir- realize the aspirations of African people, both here in the London Bar of Southwark and beyond. <clears throat> So I'm, I'm looking forward to that, but respect to her at all times. Anyway, all right, I'll pause there. Thank you, Lady Chelsea, for la- allowing me to ramble on that, that bit, but thank you okay. so much. Okay. Thank you. Let me hand over to you um, for young Malachi. We need to talk to him and find out how he's getting on. But anyway, over to you, Lady Chelsea. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, yeah, hi. Um, so this is a little bit um, to that kind of praises Malachi on his book, which is called Tutan Karmun, the Tale of the Adventurous Boy King. And what we've been doing, we've been running a little competition for my under, under 18s um, to win the book as a prize with an added £25. Um, so as usual, we'll be doing the two questions that have been unanswered. Um, just get that up. So I'll just get the number. I'll read out the number first and give the questions, so people have a little bit of time. Okay. Um, so the number to call in is o two o eight one three three five six one six. So that's the number to call the studio. Okay. Um, So the first question is going to be for children under 10. Question one, how do you spell Tutankhamun? So that's how do you spell Tutankhamun? And that's for under 10. The second question we have is for 11 to 16 year olds. Question nine. Who or what did the people of Kemet worship during the time of Tutankhamun? So that's who or what did the people of Kemet worship at the time of Tutankhamun? And those are the two questions this week. Uh, that was a number to call. We can call at any time. And again, the prize is the book that Malachi wrote himself at 14 years old and £25. So, the, so they get a, a copy of his book, hopefully a signed copy of the book, mm-hmm. and £25 if they're able to call in and answer those questions. Okay, so that's mm-hmm. a, an interesting challenge, huh? <laughs> mm-hmm. interesting challenge. Okay. And I know that um, response to this section has been rather slow, okay? But we never, we never, we never, 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 never. Reoccurring R. We never give up. And of course, I say reoccurring R, never give up, because one of the themes of today's show is, of course, the African origins of mathematics. Okay? And the R stands for reoccurring, of course. Okay? Mm. And, uh, uh, and of course, the, uh, our guest... It will speak to that theme. Uh, we'll um, talk to um, and give clear indication of where civilization, where first of all humankind came from, first civilizations, and what underpinned those civilizations. Okay, and I suspect, as this has been an interesting period for women that we need to look at women's contribution to that civilization as well, okay? That would be most interesting, okay? Anyway, but those, 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 um, those children, boys and girls, young people, those mothers and fathers, those guardians who are listening, who, can, who believe that you are able to respond to those questions for, for the under 10s and, and for the 16s to 11 year old, please call in. And of course, for those who are unsure of what the number is, I, I'm going to repeat the number for you all. So it's 0208 133 5616. 
Okay, so it's a nice, simple number. Uh, the old numbers still work, but it's, those are very long numbers. We hope these simple numbers right, enable you to call in without any hindrances, okay? And of course, those of you who are viewing this program via YouTube, Facebook, or Mixcloud via The Motivator Show, you'll see on screen, we've included the um, um, telephone number. You'll see it, 0208-133-5616. Okay, so whilst young people, boys and girls, mothers, fathers, and guardians, and others, are considering the response to that question, Lady Chelsea, let's have a call. Let's see if that is going to work. Good morning. Oh, good morning. Can you hear us? Oh, what? okay. This seems working. Good morning. Uh, who do we have on the line? Can you hear me all right? Can you hear us? Oh, well. Good morning. Good morning. There we go. Oh. We may have lost that person. I'm sorry about that. If that person could try again, uh, just making sure. Try again. Right. Hopefully, hopefully that, hopefully that's yeah. heard. Okay. One second. Can you hear us? Uh, sorry. Slight technical problem here. Let's see if we can. Is that better? Can you hear us? Hi. Ah, good. Good morning. Who, who am I speaking with? This is a technical report. Ah. Um, Chelsea's uh, voice is sounding distorted. Oh, distorted. Ah. Oh, okay. I still have that persistent problem. We appreciate the call. Ah, echoey. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm distorted. Thank yeah, you very I'm much. Here. Much appreciated. Much appreciated for the call. Okay. Um, we has got now? Lady Chelsea, huh? Okay, we need to get your sound right. Okay, I thought we had it right. I've made an adjustment. Hopefully that's right. Okay. Can I, can I wonder if there are... Anyway, let's... I was going to go on to you, and I've just made an adjustment, and I hopefully... Uh, yeah. That person listening, and you, you were able to communicate with me via WhatsApp, if you can indicate if the sound has been heard fine, please indicate. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Lady Chelsea, uh, if I come back to you, when you were at school, were you told about anything about the African origins of mathematics? Sorry. Sorry. So could you say that again? Sorry. Okay, yes. Um, when you were at school, were you told anything mm -hmm. about the African origins of mathematics? Oh, no. Um, not that I can remember. Mm, yeah. No, I don't think so. And it is generally absence here in <laughs> Um And I know that um, there's a move to um, include... Um, black history or African history in national curriculum, and, and to some extent, it is that process is well underway. Uh, but there are key features in the curriculum uh, which currently um, is a distortion of history. Okay, and and I think what I, I want to do um, before we um, have our guest come in is to play a video. Okay, and now this video. In the themes of, of, of women and women's contribution to um, mm -hmm. uh, our, our community um, uh, upliftment, um, I think this, this particular um, uh, video will, I think, provide some insights into the African uh, origins of mathematics, which we are taught here in, in Europe. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So give me a moment. Let me see. Because... Can I just to be sure, um, what about black history or African history when you were at school, Lady Chelsea? Did you experience any of that at all? Yeah. But, but did you, were you taught any but, black history or African history at school? Um, I wouldn't say African. I'd say you know, black. So, you know, um, our school was my school, well, my school. So my school is predominantly black or black girls. Um, 
so that you know we had um house names after like my um house's name was called um parks house after rosa parks wow we'd have like um i don't know a lot of like we'd i feel like we'd have some black history stuff with more maybe american based they might add a british one or two but it was very like um black i wouldn't say origins of stuff like actually africa and stuff there but they also did a lot of stuff with um charity work in jamaica and ghana and bringing them together with our school and stuff like that so they were quite it was predominantly black the headmistress was um mixed race um not the blue black obviously <laughs> and yeah. a lot of the, a lot of the majority black um classmates in the whole year wow. which is quite odd i suppose for england but yeah that's absolutely. my experience absolutely what i'm going to do before we go to our guest i'm going to first of all play this video Okay, mm -hmm. uh, and this video will provide a useful intro into our guest so that we are able to have that wider discussion on uh, our, our contribution as a people to the evolution of mathematics that we are reciting today. Okay, this is the untold history uh, uh, of uh, our peoples. History, of course, that um, generally was not um, and is not um, shared in schools. Okay, generally not shared. Okay, so give me a moment. I'm going to just set up the video and get us. Started. There we go. But it's one of the most important sciences in human history. African men are central when it comes to the study of ancient African history especially concerning the evolution of African civilization and the sciences. But when it comes to one of the most important academic disciplines of all, mathematics, one scholar suggests that perhaps it was the African woman that played a pivotal role. <laughs> What up African world, it's Home Team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and supporting this content. If you'd like access to full courses and sources, or you simply want to show your support, you may do so by clicking the Patreon link in the description box below. Timbuktu plays an important role when it comes to our knowledge of how mathematics was used in African civilization. This is not to say, of course, that math wasn't used all throughout African society, but the manuscripts at Timbuktu give us the clearest proof of its use and function. Even though Timbuktu and the University of Sankori were both founded by African women, there isn't much evidence concerning women's involvement or contribution in scholarly spaces. All the intellectual powerhouses of Timbuktu, including Mohamed Bagayogo, and his most esteemed student, Ahmed Baba, were all men. However, the further back in history we go, we see something very interesting. Africans all across the continent have expressed a respect for women that hasn't really been seen on the same scale in other parts of the world. The matrilineal philosophy present throughout African culture seems to have afforded women various freedoms, giving them access and affirmations in places and spaces that would surprise us today. The greatest proof of this was in the Nile Valley, where women had many rights and privileges under state law, a concept that we've only recently adopted today. Anyway, contrary to popular belief, the oldest manifestation of a mathematical concept was discovered in Africa amongst the Labombo and Ashango bones. And with one of these discoveries, according to one scholar, the needs and concerns of African women spearheaded the development of the mathematical sciences. Discovered in 1960 and dating back to around 8500 BC, the Ashango bone is one of the world's oldest mathematical tools in human history. It's kept in the Royal Institute for Natural Sciences in Belgium and can only be seen by special arrangement. The Shango bone was found in an ancient mountainside settlement near the Lake Edward region in present-day Uganda and the Democratic Republic of Congo. The bone is named after the Ashango people who inhabited the area sometime between the 7th and 10th centuries BC. Little is known of the Ashango people except that they hunted, fished, 
and farmed in the area before a volcanic eruption destroyed their village. It was originally considered a simple tally record, but recent microscopic analysis has revealed additional notch marks indicating that it may have been used as a lunar calendar. The bone itself has a quartz writing tool at one end, while the body is made of bone that is etched with three rows of notch marks, with each row having its own mathematical significance. The first row is a series of calculations based on the number 10. The second row contains prime numbers between 10 and 20, and the third is a multiplication table. The shango bone is an important indicator of the scientific progress in Paleolithic Africa. With the advancement of trade among societies, knowledge of mathematics and units of measure became increasingly important. Basic mathematical calculations were also used to predict the effects of drought or floods on crop yields. With the discovery of the Ishango bone, the long-held assumption that African societies were slow to develop mathematical technology was disproved. The Ishango bone is certainly important as it proves that Africans since the beginning were using the sciences to solve their problems and to enhance their lives. As amazing as the Ishango bone is, there's an even older mathematical tool that's seldom discussed. It's called the Labombo bone and it's believed to have been in use around 9000 BC. The significance of the Labombo bone is that it's the oldest expression of mathematics on the planet and it's theorized that women were its primary inventors. In the 1970s, during excavations near what is today called Border Cave in the Limbombo Mountains between South Africa and Swaziland, a small piece of the fibula of a baboon was found marked with 29 clearly defined notches. The bone, which resembles the calendar sticks still in use by the San people in Namibia today, ranks with the oldest mathematical objects known. As mentioned before, it's been suggested that since the Labombo bone was used as a lunar phase counter, women may have been the first mathematicians, as keeping track of menstrual cycles requires a lunar calendar. The Labombo bone bears witness to the existence of a very sophisticated accounting system which enabled humans to master time, and it is the first visible hint of the emergence of calculation in human history. Now since one of the functions of both the Labombo and Ishango bones are believed to have been used as lunar calendars, the agency of African women in this mathematical process seems very plausible. Regardless, the discovery of both mathematical tools just validates the idea that Africans were indeed the spark of human civilizations, especially since we see a very clear trail of culture and civilization emerging from Africans within the interior, moving further north, influencing some of the more recognizable African states in ancient times. Anyway, I'd really like to see what you guys think. Are you convinced that African women may have been the first mathematicians in Africa? Let me know in the comments section below. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help in its continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace. <laughs>
Okay. <laughs> but before I begin, I just want to just introduce you by reminding listeners and others that Pi Ratio is also, like me, a Galaxy pilot. Okay. Um, and I believe your program, when's your program? Just give a quick shout out for your program, Pi Ratio. Tell us when it's on, first of all. Um, uh, before I do that, I just want to send out sincere love to um, Sister Chelsea, Lady Chelsea, for the work that she does behind the scenes to make your to make your show run as fluid as it does week in and week out. So enough respect to the both of you. Okay, thank you very much. You're very welcome. My my show comes on Thursday mornings between the hours of 10 a.m. to midday, every Thursday. Every Thursday, right. And that's on galaxyafui.net. Yeah, absolutely. It's called um, Triangle Thursday. Triangle. And why Triangle Thursday? Before because... Um, uh, from a um, geometry perspective, the triangle is one of the most powerful shapes out there. If you notice, many of the roofs that are built use the triangle shape mm-hmm. because it's more secure than a flat roof. Mm-hmm. And so the triangle has three sides and the two sides, the two legs, a load bearing. Mm-hmm. And this is where all the numbers come in. This is makes the, um, the pyramid so powerful, mm-hmm. you know, the, it's an amazing shape. It has a lot of information about it. And it's really important that we as a people understand the numbers behind all this. Because this is these are the things that gets us interested. Because yes. we're talking the truth. Right. And because we as a people are from the truth, yes. when you hear the truth, all of a sudden your ears prick up. Recognize it, yes. Yeah. You know, so that's kind of what it's all about. Wonderful. Oh, I can see Lady Chelsea smiling, so that's good. <laughs> Uh, when I know the lady Chelsea, you, you might have an initial question um, on the WhatsApp. Yep, so you have an initial question, which will, will be useful to get us started. I'm going to hand over to Lady Chelsea. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Um, good morning. Morning. Um, it's nice to meet you. Um, I think the first question is kind of um, if I can if I remember what it was. <laughs> um, I think it was a wizard, or do you know or see a difference in the way uh, men? Or female males are taught maths and it doesn't know is that important yeah it's it's it's, it's vital you know um because um uh the major- as a mass we we don't really understand mathematics if mm-hmm. our men understood the power of numbers if they really understood the power of numbers they would come together more and would work together more. But in the school, we are taught that numbers are only for a specific purpose. And, 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 and the, the, uh, the narrative that they drive down our throats relates to industry. Mm-hmm. You learn mathematics to get involved in industry. And because many of the, the young brothers uh, they're, they're, they're not, um, they're very creative. They're very fluid. They, what they're, they're, their ism is more fluid. It's not about this structure, 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 because that is not the way our ancestors worked with numbers. And so it's done deliberately. It's definitely done deliberately to keep the majority of the boys from understanding the number one power that can make such an amazing difference in their life. It's done deliberately. So, you know, Mm. we have to recognize that and and try and use numbers to reverse that situation. And it is possible because it's being done. It just needs to be done more widely. Mm. But yes, you are absolutely right. Um, The sisters are taught differently than um, uh, the males because um, they, they, they do believe that if we understand the true meaning behind numbers, there'll be there'll be problems. Mm. I'm not saying that's true, but that's I what they, that's Yeah, what yeah, yeah. <laughs> I understand. Okay. Um, so in your opinion, why do you think we should discuss um, the African origins of mathematics? The origin. Well, you know, if you understand the origin of most things, you have, you're, you're able to make a conscious decision. For example, 
you know, you, somebody may like meat. I'm, I always like to pluck ideas out of the egg that kind of relate. Now, somebody may like meat, and there's nothing wrong with meat for those who like it. But if you knew that the meat that you were eating, the mother of that, that meat had, had, had serious illnesses, would you want to eat that meat? You now can yeah. make a <laughs> decision about that meat, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. it's the same with anything. If we understood about the origin of mathematics, then maybe we might align to it more easily. We may not think mm -hmm. that it's for the chosen few. We may not think it's for the geeks. We may not think that, well, you know, it's, it's, it's not for me and I can do without it. Because that's what they want you to think. And if we knew that our people were the originators of, of such an amazing an amazing science, you know, we, we, we would be a, a, an awesome race to deal with. We are anyway, but can you imagine if we had yeah. that in our locker, we would be absolutely awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, that's, and that's where I'm coming from. Okay. Um, so I think going off that, why do you think maths is seen as a difficult subject? Do you think it is actually difficult or is just they're making it difficult so we don't want to try it? Okay, I, I'm going to break this down again. It's very succinctly and as simple as possible. Yeah. Now, many of our students like Nike trainers, right? Yeah. You, you see the brand and everybody says, yeah, I want some of that. And they're always talking about the latest Nike trainers or the latest mm -hmm. iPhone. Now, if, you, yeah. if your child or, or, or a student, anybody who knows, they go to their late, latest, go to their Nike store for the latest trainer. And it, it is, the logo has changed. You've got, say, for example, an Iceland logo on it. And it's wrapped in a, in, 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 in a scandal bag or a black dustbin bag. They'd probably walk straight past it, wouldn't they? Because they wouldn't recognize yeah. it. Well, that's what they've done to mathematics. Mathematics, okay. the, the, the original people, when we created mathematics, we created it to align with nature. That was why we had numbers. The numbers worked for us because we as a people, we moved in line with nature. That's what made us very fluid, very creative. We never had problems with, um, uh, with garbage and sewage and all those things mm. as the original people. Now with all this technology, we've got a problem with garbage. A simple thing like garbage. We don't know where to put it. You, know, you understand we have these amazing boats and ships that go up and down the Thames or the Atlantic with full of garbage, don't know what to do with yeah. it. And we as the original people, we never had those problems. And we mm. never had the technology that they had. All we had was numbers. And we just aligned ourselves with numbers, which gave us access to how nature worked. So we could work with nature to make us do things in a more um, uh, productive manner, uh, in a more manner that saved energy and saved materials and things like that. So uh, I go back to the original question. Mathematics has been disguised. Mm -hmm. All these signs have been put there. Mm -hmm. Half of the signs, our students don't even understand and know what they mean. And yeah. the fact that some, uh, maths in schools has been split into two areas. In school, we do pure maths. Mm -hmm. I call it nonsense maths. Uh -huh. <laughs> because that mass is not associated to anything. You're working out fractions. You're working out algebra. You are working out simultaneous equations. For what reason? You have no idea. Um, yeah. When you leave school, there is a thing you use called applied mass. And what applied mass does, it it, 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 um. it dips into nonsense mass, the mass the, that we study at school, and it takes formulas out and applies it to what they're doing. So, for example, if you are, say, having a concert. Oh, we've, we've got a call. Let's see if we can take this call. Sorry. That's right. Good, good morning, caller. Good morning, caller. We're having problems with our phones this morning, I think. Good morning, caller. Good morning. Good morning. I couldn't get through. I've been trying to oh. get through to the YouTube. Oh, I'm sorry. There we go, my, my elder. How are you this morning? I'm fine, thank you. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. you, do you have a question for our guest, uh, who is a master practitioner? No, no. Oh, no, not me. Yes, I'm just a good listener. <laughs> and, and, and whilst I've got you there, my elder, 
did you when you when you had children around you did you teach them how to um, develop a positive attitude no, to math nobody I'm living alone there's nobody here okay okay right okay okay I've tried all the things I've tried all everything possible to get through but mm-hmm. well you are now foo you are now foo and you are now live on on the radio okay okay did you have a message to share with us No, I don't have the time at all. You just want to listen, do you? You just want to listen. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's fine. You you said that you can absolutely listen. Okay, thank you, Mayorda. Um uh, uh, Parvesha, please continue. Please continue. Thank you. Um yeah, so um the the applied maths is the maths that we use when we leave school when we are entrepreneurs and in industry. So for example, somebody wants to is a concert promoter or something like that for example mm-hmm. now you want to manage the crowd coming to the concert well you know you sold tickets so those particular people you would set a time as to when they can come they can come whenever because they have a ticket those who don't have a ticket you would say well right you need to get here between this time and this time which is an algebraic equation that you can put in place that can manage the crowd to comes to your concert. Now in that respect mm-hmm. you are applying what you've used or what you've learnt and it makes more sense. But at school they give you all of these formulas and all of these expressions and equations that are nonsense. They make no sense. And mm-hmm. what they fail to do is tell you the fluffy bits in between. Mm-hmm. How do I get from here to here? Because nine times out of ten at school they have a question yeah. and they have the an answer sheet and the bit in the middle of how to get to a from a to b uh you go through your school life not knowing mm-hmm. and if you don't have a calculator in your hand you have a problem mm-hmm. and as good as calculators are and they do serve a purpose it's really important that you because a calculator is only as good as the information you put in yes yeah but it's really mm-hmm. important that you understand the process and that's the key we're not taught processes at school because understanding figure out if you get understanding right you're going to know more than what they know yeah. and that's the key really and that's really what's going on okay okay all right um and um can i can I ask you uh, pavesio i know you have a website mm uh, and and if you don't mind i want to bring up your website on the screen uh but i found okay. it to be a a very interesting um whirlwind tour it gave a real insight as to who you really are i've got to tell you um so i'm going to bring it up on the screen okay and i'm going to encourage um those who are listening those who are viewing us through facebook youtube or or mixcloud to go to his brother's um website okay and first of all before i do that can you just announce what the website is by ratio and, and what's your intention is behind the website well the work the, the, the it's 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 more of a landing page but okay. what it really is it's it's a it's you can go there and that you have a number of different things that you can do because i'm fully aware that that our people uh we're all individuals and we learn in 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 different ways and it's really important that um uh we understand mathematics not only as individuals but also as a family yeah. because if we understand the makeup of our family which is another part of this this platform it gives us more insight into how we as a family are structured and how we kind of live together on this platform we have um a, a patreon membership it takes you to a patreon membership within that within that section that is Should, should I open it now? Let me open it, shall I? Please, please do. Yep, let me open that. Okay. Well, what Patreon does... Before, Patreon, you, before you begin, can yes. I just give out the URL for your website? Yep, so that those who are listening will know what... what do you have it? Hmm? Yep. So, I'll, I'll, okay, I'll, I'll give it out in that case then. So, it's maths, www.mathsurgery... Okay, make sure you can write it down. Learning courses. And it's important when saying maths, digitally most people put an S at the end. So it's just, it's maths, M-A-T-H, followed by surgery, S-U-R-G-E-R-Y, 
learning, L-E-A-R-N-I-N-G, courses, C-O-U-R-S-E-S dot com, math, surgery, learning, courses dot com. It's a long name, okay, but www dot Math Surgery Learning Courses.com. Okay. Now then, go ahead now. Let's go back to this um, Patreon business now. What is Patreon, first of all? What is You're, you're breaking up signally. Oh. Uh, can you hear me now? Is that, is that better? Oh. Lady Chelsea, can you hear? I can, I can yeah. hear you. Oh, right. Uh, Pavesha, can you hear us now? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. Frank. Oh, can you uh, hear? Yeah, forgive me, forgive me. That must be my fault. So, um, can you explain what is Patreon.com? Who are they? That's one of these landing pages you've described. Right, pa- Patreon.com. For example, in, in, in what I do, I get a lot of demands and requests for things. So what I've done is I've created a platform whereby those who are, are seriously interested, you can go there and there are a number of different things that you can access. So, for example, I do my weekly show and uh, for and, and all the recordings, I put them in that platform there. So for two pounds a month, you can go into that and access all the shows for, for, uh, for each month. And you, each month there, I do X amount of shows. You can go through those and you can take time and listen to those. I also have an area whereby for those who want to get involved in mass, but they just, they just want to dip their toes, so to speak. You know what I mean? Um, uh, there is um, a, a wealth of, no, of, of notes, how to break down particular, particular questions in mathematics. And uh, my daughter works closely uh, with me on, on this. And my daughter is um, uh, uh, 15 years old. She oh, works with me, with me on this in, in making sure mm. that the notes are I get her to do the, the like the notes for the mass toe dippers okay. uh, for uh, at primary school again for 6 to 11 uh, I've put uh, specific units what they should know not what the school says what they should know by the time they get to 11 there's certain things that they should know Mm-hmm. You know, because this is the reason why when many of our students go to secondary school, they seem to be doing so well at primary and all of a sudden they take a nosedive and nobody can explain why, why all of a sudden you're not doing so well. Well, primary school were just, they were just having a laugh, if we're going to be honest. <laughs> well, if I'll be totally honest, because they don't have to measure anything in primary school. Mm-hmm. You don't yeah. have to measure anything. You just got to keep the children amused. Mm. I, I, I let, if we keep because 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 when I say we don't necessarily measure anything, for example, how can a child be doing so well, and then as soon as you get to secondary school, there's a nosedive. That means that the parameters between primary and secondary are not the same. Okay, I, I'm going to accept that. Uh, that initial, for, we might talk about sets and so on later sure. on. But I, I'm, I'm keen that we go to other parts of your site. Um, go yeah. back to your landing page. Yes. Virtual learning subscription. If I go to that one, shall I go to that one? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, when, when in here, virtual learning, mm-hmm. if you see at the top, it's got a, a, a fight, the video course. That is that is actually free. It's free. It's, oh. it's free. When you click on that subscribe button, you will, it, all you'll ask you for is your email address. Uh-huh. And then when I when it's free, what will happen is every day you will receive a video, a video. Day one, the mathematics translator, myself, I'll be explaining what your the content, what you're going to be getting, and and I'll and in that first one it'll be a few simple sums, just mm-hmm. a little breakdown, just a little teaser. Second day, I will be teaching you processes, mm-hmm. how to follow a process to answer questions mm-hmm. things like that that's day two day three you will get um uh, uh um video on the importance of mathematics the roles it plays mm-hmm. in what we do in daily that we no, we don't even fully recognize mm-hmm. what have you you know and on, and on the fourth day you uh practical problems 
problems that we face daily and how we can use mathematics to answer those problems. And, uh, and on the fifth day, you get a, uh, uh, um, answer questions and answers and what have you. And the mother, and, and the mother of wis wisdom is, 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 is purely an option. We, it's only there because many people, after they do that, they come back and they say they want more. Mother of wisdom, the mother of all wisdom, is really about uh, the maths, is really about um, memory. Because in mathematics, you have to remember. Yes. Mm -hmm. You are not supposed to think in mathematics. Did you know that? You are supposed to remember. Yeah. Because if you think, listen carefully, the reason why you're supposed to remember is because somebody has taught you something. Yes. But all you have to do is remember it. So if they've taught you well, then you go to the part of the brain where that memory resides so you can pull out the process and the memory to answer the question. If you start thinking too hardly in maths, that means you don't know the answer. <laughs> that sounds almost counterintuitive. Uh -huh. Well, you know, if you think about it, if, you, if I said to you, if I say to you, counsellor, if I said to you, motivator, motivator, yeah. <laughs> motivator, I'm so sorry. If I said to you, if yes. I said to you, what is what is four plus four? Uh huh. Okay. I, I would do a calculation in my head, and I would say eight. But the reason why you're doing the calculation because somebody has put the calculation there. I recall the formula to use. Absolutely. Yes. If, if I said to you, can you tell me? And even though my 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 mother has gone to, on to pass passed on to the ancestors, if I said to you, could you could you tell me what her middle name is? You could stay there till the cows come home, and you could think all day and all don't. You never get it. So this is what I'm saying to you because I haven't told you the information. You're unable to uh, bring it back, retrieve it. I understand you. I understand you. Um, and, and, and is there a, a feature in your in your website that I've seen yet that um, how to improve one's memory? Is that a feature in your website? I wonder. That well, on on the uh, the mother of all wisdom. That is the the, the, the program that allows you to um, uh, let me put memory. It certainly does. It's a, it's um, and it's the way that we as a people do it. Uh -huh. We as a people. It's about um. um if we go back to the way our ancestors passed down information, you yeah. know what I mean? They did it in, in, in probably storytelling and, uh -huh. and that sort of things and, and whatever else. Well, so it's all about associating with things that we recognize and we understand and what have you. In my lessons, when I'm dealing with students, I, 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 I allow my students to associate something I've said mm -hmm. to what comes to mind. Yes. And then I allowed them to make a note of what comes to mind. And then in, in, in a weird way, when we come back to class the following weeks, I can highlight something and they know exactly what it is I'm talking about because they've been able to align it to what their memory of the situation is. That very, very, very good. You can tell you are a teacher, I have to say. I tell you are a teacher. Excellent, excellent. Your, your next block here, you've got here, it's referred to being math surgery masterclass so these are for the very clever people i assume huh well what i've done with the math surgery masterclass it's okay. important if i just go back to that one yep Where, okay. what, what i've done there is really it's important that whoops right okay, Nothing in there. Right, okay. <laughs> are you there yeah the math surgery masterclass is really all about um uh, uh specifics those who have um uh who, um, like for example, your, your the GCSEs mm -hmm. and um, uh, uh, the A levels and what have you. When you go in there, it's going to take you to. It will take you to uh, uh, another area in Patreon, but it's specifically for those who are doing GCSE. For example, I've put the GCSE syllabus in there, all the units, right. and I've broken them down. Excellent. Uh, uh, each unit, so you know how to do. I've made. Each video, no more than about eight to ten minutes long, because I know we don't like to sit down and watch things for too long. <laughs> so if you make a video for say ten, for ten minutes long, so yeah. it states on um, uh, probabilities. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now I, I I would break down what probabilities is, when it's when it's used, and 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 the formulas behind it, and then I'll do a couple of questions and show you how. 
there worked out. Uh, uh, and, and then also within that area, there is um, specific GCSE exam questions. Mm -hmm. and, and that is that area is constantly updated because um, uh, as much as I put the questions in there, somebody will come along and say, well, you know, I had this question and I didn't see an example of it in there. Once they send me the details, I will do a sum similar and put it in place. So that's constantly being updated all the time. Brilliant. Brilliant. It's a fantastic resource. I, I, a friend of mine has access to that uh, masterclass and she testifies it is first class. You know? right. Well done, you. Uh, right. Tell us about the ABC of mathematics. That box, this box well, well, the ABC of mathematics, with well, that one there, we, um, as because I, I, I'm very family orientated, if it wasn't for my queen, I would not be in the position that I'm in. Believe me when I tell you this, I'd be all over the place. You know, <laughs> and my queen, she's Is your family here, if you don't mind. That's just... right, that's right. Oh, yes, 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 yes. You're yes, such yes. a lucky man, if I may say so. You're such a lucky man. There you are. I'll put him up in, in glowing light. For you. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, the little one is, is, is now three. Oh, oh gosh. On the OK is now three now. That was when we was, he was a little bit younger. My daughter is 15 yeah. and, yeah. and my daughter's name is Kumaya. And my son, his name's Miles. Uh -huh. and, he, and Miles is um 11. Oh. And, 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 and my queen sister, Maxine, she's the one behind the scenes who keeps the family together and keeps us on our toes. And oh, so... You've been listening. Well done. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we gave that to it. Anyway, let me come off that now. Okay. Thank you. That was, yeah, go ahead. I can definitely testify that um, behind a good man, there certainly is a good woman, but behind a good woman, there isn't necessarily a good man. Oh, come on now. No, 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 there's nothing is wrong with us, you know. Things happen to us, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And, and 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 a sister, from my understanding, when you do the maths, all a sister really wants is a brother who is producing. <laughs> because uh, you see, if a if, because a sister cannot help a brother do nothing. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. If you're doing nothing, she cannot help you. Her 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 ism. Is, is, is to make that man stronger than what he is. Mm -hmm. And if he's showing potential, she can help him. Maths will teach you this. She can take him to the next level. He doesn't mm -hmm. have to lean on his own understanding because she sees things from that female perspective. And in maths, you have two sets of numbers, male and female. Mm -hmm. Even numbers are female and the prime numbers are male. Mm -hmm. So above, so below. I could go on all day about all this, but mm -hmm. I don't want to digress. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. But it's, it's, it's an interesting dynamic, an interesting dynamic. dynamic. And yeah. we'll, I, I suspect we'll need to get you back again, because the difference <laughs> between males and females, boys and girls, and how we learn and experience the world is, sure. is quite fundamental here. And there are some assumptions that are built into the behaviour of women built into the behaviour of boys. Um, mm -hmm. and, and in my experience as a latter-day school governor and being involved in recruiting teachers, contact with thousands, tens of thousands of um, families and young people, is that, mm -hmm. in my opinion, my humble opinion, they very actually, there's no difference between boys and girls. It's what we tell them, it's what we teach them. That's what creates the differences. And what we reinforce, that is what creates the differences. Men can be as sensitive as bonding, as, 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 as um, in, intimately involved with their children, indeed their, their partners, as, as indeed women can. There is no difference between us. It's socialization. But let's have a that debate another time. Could it be interesting to have a dialogue with yourself and a few other um, com past contributors on this subject, because it's pretty fundamental in us forming those bonds, because the bonds, the, the basic unit of a, of a successful civilization is the family. And I, I deliberately put that picture up um, because that was an example of family. Our family must stay together, work together, to grow together, yeah? And indeed, through growing, we, we become truly powerful as a people. Family is critical, okay? Family is critical. Boys, 
if 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 you're in a position where you a woman is now pregnant as a result of your action, both your actions, you have to follow through with the responsibility. You must create families. Families are critical, absolutely critical, and that's what. Mm-hmm. And in far too often, far too often, we leave young women with the burden of child rearing, and somehow the boys are not expected to do so. I believe that's a fundamental flaw in our understanding of what family, real family is. You've demonstrated real families. But let me go, let me go on to your other box, which is, which is described as being bonus web courses. Well, I, the, 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 the ABC one, I just want to quickly mention that one. I do apologise. Okay. You know, the ABC one. But before I mention it, um, uh, my, my, my learned friend, I, I just want to say, I just have to say that... Um, um, I have to slightly disagree with you on, on some of the points with regards to the boys and the girls. And we will come back to that. The reason why I said that, oh, I have I have lectured in some of the most highest places and I do understand and I have been a, a school governor and all of these things, you know, and, and if we understand the mathematics about the emotions that boys carry to what girls carry, it may make a little bit more sense. And I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I will leave it there, but we will come back to this because maths answers everything. But the ABC of mathematics, what that is, it's whereby us as a family, we really got a little bit tired of our little um, uh, uh, youngsters before they start to go to school and, and, and nursery and so forth, that the only sort of things that is passed on to them is basically A is for apple, B is for bike and da 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 and all that sort of stuff. So what we did here is we we've got uh, uh, the Queen and and little Onyeke when he was very small. We got them to do the 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 ABC of mathematics and they've gone through the ABC and it's a video and also audio of and and A is for algebra, B is for mm. brackets. C is for calculus and things like that. So what we're trying to do is instill mathematics into our into our young ones before they go to um, start primary school and nursery and things like that. And with that package, if one is able to, if it's repetitive, repeat it, you'd be surprised. Once they start a pr- a nursery or primary school, they're, they're, they're on fire. Mm-hmm. So that's, that was, that, that's what that little program is about. Thank you. I just want to bring it up on the screen so that uh, they, and and this all this is your work. Yep, this is all your work. Yep. Yes, yes. On that, on there, you'll have all of the children, and they're all doing it. So, 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 so the, we would do A to Z, and that would be done by uh, the Queen and um, our little one. Then you would have A to Z done by Miles for his age group because he's eleven. He was ten at the time. Then you'd have mm-hmm. Kumaya. She did A to Z. And that was done um, for her age group, which was probably 13 to 14. And then I end up doing it the boring way for people like myself and you. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank so. you. Um, now tell us about the bonus web course. Um, let's have a look at that one. Um, it's been so long. What did I do in that one? <laughs> okay what that one is actually the bonus the bonus web course well the bonus web oh, the bonus web course is um is, is really about um uh the mass behind the family mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because the family has a makeup now the family consists of the father the mother which is equal to the child or children mm-hmm. squared by school and environment oh interesting okay Make so, that explain that further go, go okay. ahead um uh i um there is a formula that that one hears at school some may remember it some may not remember it but i'll say it anyway it's a, it's a formula by derived by albert einstein mm-hmm. uh physician and uh, it's a formula for relativity and it was M, um, um, E is equal to MC squared. And that is the uh, formula for relativity. And what it simply means is that E, which is energy, is equal to M, which is mass, mm-hmm. times C, 
squared, which is the speed of light. Mm -hmm. Now, that formula has stood the test of time. Why? Because each component knows what it is supposed to do in that formula. So every mm -hmm. time you put it together, you get the answer that you're looking for. Well, if you apply the algebraic formula to the family, if each component within the family formula knows what it's supposed to be doing, then you will find that there will be less cracks in the family. Mm -hmm. So what should the father be doing? And it's broken down. What should the mother be doing? It's broken down. How should the father be treating the mother and vice versa? It's all broken down. And then you look at the, the, the child. What is the role of the child? Well, the child, as a child, their role is to love and be loved. Yeah. That's their role. But many of us, we are asked to do things out of our remit. Yes. We're asked to, 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 to do things, look after children at an age when, we, you know, we're asked to do things that we're not supposed to be doing at our age, right? Which takes us out of our uh, so-called remit. And then we have the environment we live in, the schools we go to. We have to be very clear. The environment plays a big part on, on, on our upbringing. Yes. Uh, uh, the school we go to, uh, yes. uh, and the quality of teaching we get, that also plays a part. Yes. Because nine times out of 10, often, our parents don't always, haven't always followed through on their education. And sometimes they shy away mm -hmm. from the information or the work you bring home from school. So there's a breakdown in the formula, yes. you see, because what you're bringing home is not being able to be qualified uh, and, and what have you and all that sort of stuff. And it creates um, certain little bottlenecks in that formula and causes certain components to malfunction, I should say. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. And uh, you and I could talk for hours on this one. <laughs> It is pretty fundamental, uh, and you beautifully broken it down. And uh, I, I could translate that, and I, I won't do it now, but I can come to time. I could translate it in my own experiences in working with families, with boys and girls, mothers and fathers, aunts, aunties, and so on. Uh, and yes, the factors you've highlighted are serious factors, but often the families themselves are not aware of the deficits, okay, not aware of their attitude, not aware of their impact they're having, they have on their sons and daughters, niece and, uh, niece and nephews, you know, cousins and so on. Um, I believe that's a separate show altogether. In fact, I believe it's such, a, it's, it's such an important um, observation you've made. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you back again, but this next time, you're going to need to demonstrate how these components impact oh. each other so that those who are listening can fully appreciate what you've just described. This is pretty powerful. Can I, can I just say something? Of course. My, my, my learned friend. My, 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 my thing is this. People need to understand the power of mathematics. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. You know, my, my job as a, um, I'm a mathematical investigator. Mm -hmm. What you have to understand is math does not care whether you are male or female. Indeed. Math does not care what shade of color you are. Math does not care about your emotions. Mm -hmm because maths exposes the truth. And if you apply the correct formulas to any situation, mm -hmm. you will get the correct answer. Now, some may say, Pi ratio, what are you talking about? Because there are many things out there where they're giving you facts and figures that are not right. Well, those are not the wrong answers. You have to understand that out in the big bad world, there are many different terms for, for average, mm -hmm. many different terms for average, mean, median, mode. There are many different terms for average, depending on which one you want to put across. Mm -hmm. uh, um, people need to be aware of what is an equation? What is an expression? What is a formula? What is being used when they give you statistics? Because if you understand this, you are in a position to make a conscious decision instead of being dragged yes. or, or, or led like sheep. And, and they know 
that if we move as a mass, as a people, we are so powerful, it's not funny. And they use mathematics to do this. Mm -hmm. This is why we need to understand maths. And that's my point. So it's okay. my point to, to, to make people aware. Sorry. You make you make a point, and that's that's why I believe we need to do a, a series here. What you describe about family, if understood by families in the manner which you described it, and be illustrated well, so that they can fully appreciate uh, the messages you're communicating. Uh, I suspect that um, this will impact on some families, not all, but some families sufficiently in recognizing that uh, where there's deficit, you seek support. Okay. Mm -hmm. All too often, families are not seeking support. That's mm. the challenge we now have. But mm. at this point of time, I'm going to take us on to your, your to the middle box, which is pi ratio bio. Okay, let's uh, go now. If I get into it very quickly, where now, are we? here. Oh, uh, I think it's uh, it's trying to load. Oh, this one may not load. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, it is not going to load. Is it loading? Is it loading? No. Oh, there you are. There you are. So this is you. Okay. Just tell us a bit more about yourself from what you've written here. Yeah. I didn't realize you're from Jamaica, you see, but of Jamaican parents. So, um, um, hey, I can uh, hold my head up high now. But go on, tell us a bit more about yourself now. Why? What makes you who you are? Come on, tell us. Thanks. You know, um, I'm, I'm really passionate about uh, mathematics. I really am passionate about it. You know, um, it's a thing that reveals truth. As I said, I was born in, I was born in London. I'm a South London boy, mm -hmm. uh, Dulwich mm -hmm. Hospital. I'm actually a twin. Okay. Uh, oh. and, and, my, and, and, and my queen, she's a twin. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, wow. There you go. <laughs> see, we're, we're making the numbers add up, you see. Yeah. <laughs> Balance. <laughs> you know. Uh, right, you know, and uh, I, 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 I've done the rounds on the educational circuit. I've done uh, uh, lectures at, at schools, colleges, Goldsmith, Lewisham, Kingston University. Done, I've done the rounds, you know, and what I've found everywhere I've gone is that, you know, um, uh, you know, our, our, our people are being shortchanged. Yes. You know, because the curriculum is not built for us. And I'm not saying that the teachers are bad teachers. But when you're given something to follow and the something from the outset is wrong, then you're, you're just continuing, you're perpetuating that thing. And, it's, and, and you know, rightly or wrongly, they're just doing their job. But we're being shortchanged as, 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 um, as, as, as a people. And our students need to um, uh, get um, access to what can make a difference. So I currently specialise in, in, in teaching uh, maths that's going to make a difference to your lives. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do um, uh, online tuition uh, and I teach you the fundamentals about formulas and all that sort of stuff and, and whatever else. But I teach our children and our adults the benefits of maths in mm -hmm. your life daily and how if you embrace it, it your, your, your life goes to another level. You understand things better. You, you know, you can put things into, in, into context. Maths allows you to do this. But because of the way it's presented, we just feel that it's not part of who we are. And everything we do, even you on your show today, maths is governing you because you have to be out of the studio by a certain time. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? You, you understand. You have to, you know, make the numbers add up. How many listeners do you have? Can they hear you clearly? Frequency, vibration, it's all numbers. And so it's really important that we do understand. And so for me, I just, I do, I love maths. I really do love it. And, and I love the, uh, the fact of giving it, give, making children, anybody have that epiphany moment mm -hmm. when that light bulb goes and they said, you know what? I get it. Yeah. I yeah. get it. And if you can bottle that, that moment, that is the thing for me because now they're on a journey. They want more. Yeah. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Um, Lady Chelsea, you may have a, a quick question about the book. On your yeah. About the book, I had a question. Um, yep. Go ahead, yep. Um, okay, I just want to know uh, quickly, so we're running out of time, also we haven't given out the number as well. Um, how yes. much control um, do like teachers have about what and how they teach? Um, 
because I know, like you're saying, they have to follow certain, the curriculum and stuff like that. But if there was another, are they allowed to teach in a way that I don't know is more interesting or as is far it as like I'm very strict? As far as I'm concerned, I don't think they have yeah. any control. Like, as far as I'm okay. concerned, cool. because yeah, to yeah. Me, if you're a teacher, your job is to teach. Mm-hmm. You're a bit mm-hmm. like James Bond by any means, like, back, like <laughs> Malcolm or Malcolm X by any means necessary. Mm-hmm. If you've got to put on a, 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 I don't know, some sort of um, outfit to get the message across, then that's your job. You know, mm. the problem with with, with 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 the system is, is that you have a, a class and the class has 30 children in. Yeah. Now, mm-hmm. those children have all different ways of learning, you know, and uh, the school system may start to, pigeonhole students and put them in certain categories and say that well this one is this and this one is that and once they start putting labels on your child that becomes like excess baggage you know like when you're going to the airport and you're just lugging around excess baggage everywhere you go for the rest mm-hmm. of your school life it's just excess baggage and some people some students and even parents they wear these labels as a badge of honor mm-hmm. i have some some parents come to me and they say to me um you know um I want. I think I hear that you're really good at maths, and I really want you to teach my child. But um, they've got ADH or whatever it is, ABC, EFG, whatever it is they've got. And I say, listen to me. Stop right there. Yeah, yeah. If I um, say to your child, if I'm teaching your child, and I curse in front of your child for the next two weeks, I guarantee you they will pick up that cursing language. Yeah. I don't care what they've got. They're going to pick that up. So why is it then you keep taking this tag and lugging it around everywhere? No, 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 no. That tag, people are making money off of that tag, right? right? But your child is not benefiting from that tag. Mm -hmm. So let's be clear. I am going to teach your child, and it's very simple. If I say something or I present something and they don't understand, all they have to say is, Siba, what you're saying don't make sense, you know? Mm-hmm. And then I know I have to draw breaks, rewind, and come again. And I have to do it in a different manner. It's as simple as this is not rocket science. Yeah. But yeah. the system doesn't allow you to do that. Mm-hmm. When you're working in the system, you, you, you got, you've got what? You've got 90 minutes, yeah? And in that yeah. 90 minutes, you've got to get across a message to 30 people or whatever it is, yeah? So you put something on the board, yeah? Now, if somebody is short-sighted, they've got a problem. That's fine. Right. If so, if you're te- if you if you if you're saying it and somebody can't hear that well, you got a problem. Okay. You know, if somebody wants to see pictures to break down the sum, you got a problem. Yes, yes. Uh, although, of course, although, of course, and just to be fair on teachers generally, uh, there are some excellent teachers who have successfully t- taught in in areas our children, successfully taught our children, so they go on to higher education and, and, and become successful and economically viable members of society. Okay. You're very, you're, you're, excuse me for interjecting, you're absolutely spot on, but let's be very clear here. I'm talking about the masses. The, yeah. the, the, the chosen few who get through, you know, and go on to do amazing works, and I'm not knocking it, let's be very clear. Those individuals are usually are usually trained by the system to work for the system. I don't see many of them coming back and breaking down formulas or what have you on a platform so that we can stand on their shoulders as a mass and move to the next level. Uh, That's uh, just my humble opinion. I hear you. you and I, and I think it's really important because you are among the academics in, in the community and we have had that academics on the program. Yes, and, yes. and whilst I'm not going to disagree with you, we'd like to see more of them on the program, imparting sure. um, really important messages to the community. I think it's really for us as a community, we've got to talk them up to encourage them to come forward. 
you know? Sure. Yeah, because as, um, I'm sure there's a formula here about how you stimulate a positive response from a, 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 a component which you have no direct contact with, you know? If you want that component to respond to you, what are the, a, a common, uh, what is the universal communication tool that you should use to engage that, 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 that component so they can respond to your overture? I think that's, there's a formula there that you and I need to discuss but from sure. my, particularly the public um, elected official, is to encourage um, community activism, involvement, you know, collaboration, you know, so that uh, you all work, we all work for a common purpose, a, a common goal. You know? um, and so we, in order to achieve that, we, we recognise our the weak parts of our community, but we seek to strengthen them. Okay, And I found in my humble opinion, that criticising them, particularly publicly, doesn't strengthen them. It tends to isolate them and they pull away. I need them to come together. I need them to come forward to us. And I'm, and therefore, I'm determined with, with Lady Chelsea to encourage other academics to share their knowledge. You focus your, your, your specialism on mathematics. I'd like, we want to encourage those who are specialists in, in physics, chemistry, biology. Those who, who are specialists in um, um, electricity electronic engineers, those who are com computer scientists, and so on. And we want those academics within the community to feel confident and able to, part to participate and share their knowledge through a platform such as this. So we all can gain strength and, and unity through them. And what you're achieving, let me say again, what you're doing is powerful, truly powerful. And I'm confident that this, this show will be repeated again and again in other places. Mums, dads, aunts and uncles, those who care for children, those who are concerned about their own education, will be incentivized to go to your website. And I want to give your website address out again. It is www.mathsurgerylearningcourses. Math without the S, then surgerylearningcourses.com. Okay. And uh, they can find your website. And I hope through that website that they will subscribe to the various modules you've created and thereby they will be part of that taking control empowering in themselves not only themselves but their children and indeed their children children we've got to think big if we are to achieve those magnificent outcomes that marcus garvey alluded to that we will create a civilization that will astound the world praise Jer. Can I ask you, I'm going to go over to Lady Chelsea. I think she may have a question for you in regards to your book. Mm. Um, yeah, uh, basically, what is your book? What is it about? Um, why did you write it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. Why did I write that book? Yeah. Uh, again, my, 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 my queen, she's um, always wanting me to do things outside the box. Uh -huh. And um, mm -hmm. uh, the human code actually looks at um, us as a people um, and what our makeup is. Mm -hmm. Because it, it, do, if, if parents sit down with their children, they will tell their children that, you know, I've, I've probably had held a number of jobs. I've probably gone through a lot of things and, and what have you, not knowing exactly what to do. How can we prevent our children from making the same mistakes and going through? Well, each and every one of us, I believe, have a code. Mm -hmm. And if we understood our code and we were able to break down our code, it would help us go through life smoother. Now, what do I mean? Everything, <laughs> well, everything that we buy is coded. Uh -huh. If you buy a book, any parcel you get, it's got a barcode on it. And if you are able to translate or interpret that barcode, it will tell you where it comes from, when it was made, where it was made, why it was made, who made it what its purpose is, mm -hmm. or any barcode, even, even on a letter, they have it on it, back of books, you name it, they've got a barcode. Mm -hmm. We are the most precious commodity on this planet. Why wouldn't we have a code? Mm -hmm. We have a code that nobody's tampered with. It has to be something that nobody can tamper with. Mm -hmm. And that is the date you come into this world. Mm -hmm. And I've mathematically been able to unravel that matrix. And it's in the book. And it looks at us from, a, at, from the beginning coming all the way to where we are now and to work out what your what your personal code is and what it does it gives you direction as to 
what job you should be doing. Uh huh. I see. Things like that. You I see. see. Yes, that's that's what it does because at this moment. Many of us as students, we leave school, we don't even know what we should be doing. We know we like this or we like that, but we don't really know what we should be doing. Now, if you had a barcode that you could read that could tell you what you're supposed to be doing, that at least you could go down the right path. Okay. And give yourself an idea. That's, that's what <laughs> fascinating. And, and, and just so I'm clear, are you saying that um, uh, you have young people or others come to you and ask you, to um, uh, discern their code, and therefore you make recommendations to what careers, what, what, what path they should follow? Would that, would okay, that... I'll, give you, I'll give you a prime example, because this book is stemmed from conversations with students. Uh -huh. well, I, one of my students, uh, I, I, I said, it was yesterday evening actually, I said, what do you plan to do when you leave school? And I always ask, ah, uh, you know, I don't know. Okay, fine, you don't know. <laughs> but your exams are in May. Yes, what are you going to do? And every week she comes and I don't know, I don't know. Okay, it's not a problem. But I know she's an amazing artist. Okay. She's an amazing singer. How do I know this? Because whenever she's doing her work, you have students who doodle a lot. Doodle means that they scribble and they create little art, mean, whatever it is. Every day of her life, she creates art. Mm -hmm. So I directed her down that art world and it has blown her mind. Absolutely. She said that she didn't even know that she was into art. She created a piece of art for me and it was a head, it was a skeleton's head. And what it, and, and she, it was her representation of maths because okay. she hates maths. <laughs> and so she created this skeleton's head and, and a lot of terms on it that, that were negative, but it was all related to maths. But the artwork was absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. So now she's created, she, she has a portfolio. Mm -hmm. The portfolio is online. She's now so interested in the maths behind art uh -huh. that has given her the interest to study maths more. Wonderful. Because I'm now aligning uh, the maths to what it is she actually likes and wants to do. And that's the beauty of mathematics. So even if you wanted to be a carpenter, I could share with you the mass behind carpentry. If you want to be a ballet dancer, uh -huh. the same thing. So that's how this works. Wonderful. This is truly inspirational. Um, do you work by yourself or do you have a team of people, uh, brothers and sisters around you? Or uh, I think you may have said it's your, your wife and yourself, but how do you work? How do you work? Well, this is uh, uh, apart from my family, who, who, who do a lot of the work behind the scenes, I collaborate with a number of... Uh, uh, organizations uh, around the globe, you know, uh, not only in um, uh, education, but also in different industries like, you know, finance and stuff like that. And they want their students to understand the importance of maths within finance or asset management, things like that. You know, I'm asked to um, put on uh, presentations. I normally generally create some sort of um, uh, video, an intro video that one can watch and, and, and what have you. Collaboration, as you know, is the, is, is the key. Absolutely. You know, without collaborating, there, because no man is an island, mm -hmm. and it's really important. You know, my 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 goal is really that the, the way that I teach, I love what I do, and it comes across in the way that uh, my students communicate with me and the videos that I put out there. But there is a there is a there's a real message behind this. Mm -hmm. You know, there are steps, processes that if we're able to follow makes such a difference so for example uh, uh if teachers who are, who, are, who, are, who, are, who are teaching students there are nine steps that you should take why nine why nine steps why not eight why not seven nine well there are nine numbers good good morning caller can you hear us yeah, hi. yes we can we can okay Oh, is, is the book already in paperback as yet? Good question. Um, yes. I'm not sure if you heard that, uh, Parve Show. The, the question yes. is, is the, book, um, okay. is the book published if it can be acquired? Where can we buy it? The book is published and it's in paperback and it's also on Kindle and you can uh, uh, get it on Amazon. Say again? Sorry, Corda. Um, he was responding to your, to your question. I didn't hear you, Corda. Say again. 
I saw the Kindle version is available, oh. but um, it said that the paperback would be would be next week or something. Oh, yeah, the, the, the paper, the paperback that that I think you're referring to maybe a, a few weeks ago. The paperback has been live now for a, about a week and a half, two weeks now. Ah, okay. So it is available, right? Yes, uh, yes. Did you know if, if the, which platform is available, uh, Parisha? On Amazon. On Amazon, okay. Yes. Call up, did you hear that? It's available via Amazon. Okay, and the paperback is available, yeah? Yes. That's, that is now available. Right, okay. Brilliant, brilliant. Please acquire the copy, and you may want to ring back another time and tell us what, what you learned from it and what impact it's had on you. <laughs> huh? <All right. laughs> thank you so much for the call thank you for the, for, for the call thank you thank you thank you brilliant that was a, that was a brilliant call that was, that's what we want to hear you know those who are stimulated enough to want to acquire the book because by the show i'm going to have you back again uh, one i want to talk about the book and uh that book i've not read it all yet but the interesting features in that book which we definitely want to have a dialogue okay cool. I mean, absolutely need to talk about the mass that surrounds families, you know, mm -hmm. uh, to help mothers and fathers, boys and young men and young women. I did it, but I say that, okay? Definitely. To find that balance, okay? Because that will be a productive program. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm sure help many think clearly about their actions, okay? Absolutely. Okay. Thirdly, I want to encourage listeners to go to your website and mm -hmm. take advantage of the clearly the many hours you spent producing the, the information producing those modules of learning modules to help us to acquire a taste and excel in mathematics okay to fully appreciate mathematics and its importance in our lives to have a teacher here who's produced the materials we want to give support to you and we will in, in my in my in our um, uh, uh, marketing that we send out in the future we'll put a line that highlights your book and your website to encourage the, the those who read it to go to your website and of course to obtain copies of your book okay could i could i just say the, the, the students to all students you don't have to become a mathematician no but the system that you are in have created hurdles. Yes. And one of the hurdles that you have to get over is your exams. Yeah. And what the aim of the platform is, is to give you tools that will help you unlock that door so you can get over. Because once you get over, your entrepreneurial skills can kick in then and you can go and be as creative as you like. But the further up the ladder you go, the more maths you will need to understand, but you'll have a team around you by then. And so that, that's, that's not a problem. But it's really important that you don't deny maths because mm -hmm. you're going to need maths, yes. whether you like it or not. It's just the way it is. So, you know, once you get over that sort of hurdle, you, you, you'll embrace this because once you understand the processes, it just makes it so much easier. Brilliant. That's all I wanted to say, really. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And that, if I may say so, was the key message we want to get across today. Yes. Take advantage of these, of these modules and math will be made that much easier. Well done, well done. Now, Pyratio, okay. I have to say, this has been a great pleasure, great pleasure. And I, I, I've, I've received, again, quite a few interesting messages from people. Uh, I've got here a, a mother who said that she, she herself, she doesn't believe she's in any way mathematics, but she um, has gone to, but has purchased a number of math books uh, for her son, okay, and he's going through them, but she doesn't, she's not able to um, take her, take her son through those books, in other words, to support him, okay, um, so mm -hmm. they've, she, she's considering, um, she's considering um, uh, hiring a tutor, and she's wondering if your online module would be the way to go okay and she wondered whether or not the young person would really need someone live rather than this online facility what, 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 right. what would you be yeah okay anybody anybody who wants tuition whether it be subscription or uh one-on-one -on -one, yeah they email me first okay give me your email address give out your email address we haven't given that out yet uh, 
maths.surgery, maths, M-A-T-H-S, maths.surgery, S-U-R-G-E-R-Y, at yahoo.com. Brilliant. Yep. Maths.surgery at yahoo.com. And anyone who sends me an email, I will give them a 15 to 20 minutes Zoom call. Thanks. Because um, the thing about passing on knowledge, sharing knowledge, you have to make sure that you are compatible. If I am to teach anybody, there has to be a level of compatibility. And that is what the Zoom call does. Obviously, I'm not compatible to everybody and vice versa. That's why we have a number of teachers. All right. I'm not the best, but I'm also not the worst. You I just have my You are brilliant, if I may say so. I have my own style. And so it's really about the way a child wants to, to learn. Now, I usually find the older students who, for example, you have many students who just want to, oh, I've got my exams are coming up. I've got to get my exams done. Well, you, they need to be steered more towards the subscription because you are showing them what they have to do and, they, and it's just being repeated and they have to get that understanding where they should know. Whereas if you're teaching somebody a process from scratch, that's usually the younger ones. And so it all depends on the age and what they know. But there is also a method mm -hmm. of teaching. And that is what I wanted to get across. There are nine steps when you're teaching a child. Number one, you must gain their attention. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by that? Their ball, their mind, wipe it clean. Because they're coming to you with a perception. Yes. So you have to wipe that ball clean. That's how you gain their attention. Once you do that, you inform the student of the objectives. Yes. So it's clear. So it's all clear. Once you do that, and there are things behind that, you stimulate recall of prior learning. Yes. What do you know about what I'm going to tell you about? Is there anything you know about? So we can look at that. After we do that, we present the content. Good. And then once you present the content, you provide a learning guidance so you a process of how to, to you guide them and then what you want to do is elicit performance yes. let them show you that they understand and then you assess the performance yes. and then you enhance the retention which is the memory absolutely so that they are able to go and retrieve it and bring it back those are the nine steps wonderful <laughs> I'm going to keep repeating that part of this program. Uh, we've only now got a, 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 a less than a handful of minutes remaining. Oh. I would say, I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know you're getting into your stride, okay? I just love teachers. But I want to thank you for being an outstanding guest on the show today. Mm. Yeah, we're yeah. definitely going to do this again. Uh, aspect of this which we can there are far more much more we can get out of you much much more to get out of you i believe you possess you possess great potential for the community oh my dear great potential lady chelsea let me hand over to you what you were able to say to Pyratio. yeah mm -hmm. um yeah no thank you for coming um it's been one of my favorite shows you're cool. a great guest and thank you for what you do it's your website and everything's amazing i hope you, I you to continue much. that you're welcome Thank you, my sister. Thank you. Horatia, thank you. May you continue to continue with your good works. May your wife continue to give you the support that mm -hmm. is shown bearing fruit. And may your children remain as loving, as caring for you as you are for them. And may they excel and achieve all of their ambitions, all of their goals. Thank wow. you for being an outstanding guest today. Thank you. Thank Blessing to you. Blessing. Thank you so okay. much. A shay. Bye. 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 A shay. A shay. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Lady Chelsea, huh? Wow. The mm -hmm. series of weeks with inspirational Black people, African people, who have shown us yeah. why we are such a powerful and influential community, huh? How about that, Lady Chelsea, huh? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. If your son or daughter, future son or daughter, is taught by someone like that, oh my God, they'll come home with their eyes wide open, they're all <laughs> on high. <so> yes. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Yeah. 
that would be great. Hopefully it will be the case. Huh? Sorry, it will be the case, yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wonderful, wonderful. Oh, I, you know, we've only got maybe a, a, less than a minute or so. I just want to give a yeah. big shout out for all those who've been listening. Please go to his website. Yeah. Pi Ratio is a true example of the very best in our community and keep listening. And if you're viewing us by Facebook or YouTube, remember, give us a like, you know, the finger or, or subscribe. Subscribe doesn't mean any money. All what happens is that we notify you of the subject of the forthcoming program. So please subscribe. Please give us a like on YouTube and Facebook. And of course, say hi to us by, by, message, by the message board. Thank you all for being wonderful listeners and viewers. Lady Chelsea, your closing words? Um, yeah, it was a um, great show. I hope everyone enjoyed it and learned something and able to use the resources. Um, thank you for listening. Thank you all. Good weekend to you all. Forgive me. Good strong to you all. Good strong to you all. And remember, collaboration, working together, it's the only way forward. Yeah, we're not a we're not a single man, we're not a single woman. We are a family. We are indeed a community. Long live long and prosper. Praise be. Oh, yes. there, you there you go. Thank you so much, all. Bye bye. Bye bye, everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Mm -hmm.